Hi, I'm going to be walking you through a demo of Spectrum Copy Data Management, and I'll be doing this from the perspective of different users who would be interfacing with CDM. So I'll be introducing you to Bob, who's a DB admin for SQL, Kevin, who's our VMware admin, and Stacy, who is a storage admin. Stacy, our storage admin, has been seeing growing interest in different people in the IT department wanting to use hardware-based snapshots for different purposes, like DevOps, data protection, copy management. But this has caused two issues. The first is, with all these snapshots being created, they're often not cleaned up. And so we ended up with a lot of wasted space. So Stacy needs a way to lifecycle manage the snapshots that are being created and clean them up when they're no longer needed. Second, Stacy wants to be able to govern who uses what type of hardware, creates how many snapshots, and how long those snapshots are being kept for. So she wants to be able to implement service level agreements. With copy data management, Stacy can make copies available to the data consumers when and where they need them. So let's go ahead and take a look at IBM Spectrum copy data management. She will be installing a small VMware image into the environment so she doesn't have to introduce any new appliances or anything else. It's a simple in-place install which will be up and running in about 15 minutes. Once the install is complete, she'll want to go out and configure that environment to include the different hardware that's in her environment, the different applications, and the different sites. Maybe she has hardware that's sitting in New York. Maybe she has different hardware and different applications that are sitting in Silicon Valley. So here she'll go to the sites and providers on configure. She can go into sites and as you can see she's already set up her Silicon Valley, Berlin, and New York sites. And then she'll go into the provider and pick out the different hardware and the different applications that they're utilizing in this environment. And here we can see, for instance, that she's already defined an application server for that SQL database that Bob was the administrator of. And we can also see she has already defined and, and connected with the storage here. This is a storewise storage. So in this storage right here, the general information we can see is an IBM storewise 3700 CDM. Once it has permissions, we'll go out and find all the volumes associated with that storage as well. In the same manner, we've also defined our VMware environment, and that was the VMware environment you saw Kevin running. And we can expand that and see that it also sees all the different virtual machines underneath that particular VMware. Now, in order to define these different pieces to the copy data management, Stacy will have to have provided some access to that. And that access would include things like the password and a user ID on the SQL or on the VMware or, or on the StoreWise. And depending on what type of application or hardware it is, it'll need different permissions to be able to access that. The nice thing about that is that it's agentless. She doesn't have to go and install an agent on the StoreWise or an agent in the VMware environment. She just needs to have an, the correct user capabilities for the different pieces. Now, once she's gone through and created these different sites, she's identified the different hardware applications and in those sites, and she's provided the, the correct credentials to access that, she'll also want to set up some service level agreements. And these service level agreements will determine things like which type of hardware can be used to create snapshots, how often can those snapshots be created, and how long am I going to retain each of those snapshots? And this becomes really important because now Stacy can control who's using which resources, how many snapshots they're creating, and automatically having those snapshots expire and be deleted once they pass their service level agreement policy. So Stacy has created three different policies out here. As you can see, she's called them gold, silver, and bronze. And she can easily create new policies just by clicking on the new there. She has done most of the setup, and, and that might have just taken an hour or so. It's not very complicated, easy wizards to walk her through those different steps. The next thing she'll want to do is create individual jobs. The jobs are what actually 
create the snapshots and can do them on a creation on a regular basis, um, as you saw with the service level agreements. Let's go ahead and, and show how simple it is to create a job. We'll go ahead and click, click New. And we're going to do a backup job. Now, when it says backup, this is just creating a new snapshot. And this snapshot can be used for many purposes. It could be used to do a restore. It could be used to create a snapshot that then would be offloaded into Spectrum Protect via our data protection pieces. Or it could be used to clone and, and create some type of new DevOps in a different location. But we're going to create the job. We'll call it the monitoring VM. We're going to use our default environment here. I'm going to give this job uh, a gold level so that they can create every hour. OK, and instead of backing up the entire data center, I just want to back up this particular VM. Now, the reason that I might choose to use CDM to do the creation of a snapshot of an individual virtual machine versus using the built-in vSphere web client capability is vSphere web client is using the VADP technology, whereas when we're doing these snapshots, these are hardware snapshots. So they'd be a lot faster than the speeds and feeds that Kevin would see using VADP. So in our case, we're just going to do this individual VM. I'm going to go ahead and create that job. And now that that job is out here, if I want to kick it off on demand, I don't want to wait for it to be to, to run on a scheduled basis, I can simply click Start. And since this is a single on-demand kick, kickoff, I can choose to change the policy. Or Whereas if I just waited for the job to run, then it would utilize the service level agreement that I originally signed to it. But I still want to use gold, so I say OK. And then down here in the activity, I can see that that snapshot is being created and it's running. So you can see how simple it was for Stacy to create jobs. And a lot of these jobs will just run on a regular basis behind the scenes, depending upon what their service level agreement was set up to. But I also showed you how you could create a job that you could kick off on demand. OK, well, while that's running, I'm also going to show you how we can do the restores of this. In order to do the restore, I would also want to create a job. So I will choose New. And this time, it's going to be a restore job. Now, it says restore. And this could be used to restore the, a virtual machine from an individual snapshot. Or it might be used to clone snapshots at a different location for DevOps or anything else. Just like with the backups, you may have it so that the cloning occurs on a, on a scheduled basis. Or it may just be a one-off. We're going to choose to do an instant VM restore. For my source, I'm going to choose the machines out here that I know have backed up. And in this case, there's that monitoring VM. I'm then going to choose the copy, which is default. And I'm going to choose the destination. Now, with this destination, this is where if you wanted, for instance, to send it to a different location or different hardware, this is where it would be really powerful to be able to choose an alternative location. In our small little test environment here, I'm just going to restore it back to our original location. So we'll go ahead and create that job. I'm going to kick it off on demand so you can see it running. Start. OK, and I'm going to put this in test mode. You do have different modes you can do the um, restores with. And click OK. I can see the activity running below. So we have started the restore. And Stacy will be able to monitor that directly from here and, and, and see it running. It looks like it's about 47% finished. So we'll, we'll go ahead and let that finish restoring before we see it over in the web client. What I just showed you was for VMware. We can also do the same for SQL. When we create these, these can be online consistent backups of that SQL environment. So we do have a lot of power to make sure that if we are creating a snapshot, it is consistent. What I'm showing you is Stacy kicking off these jobs. But part of the power of CDM is that she can give Kevin or Bob specific abilities to do these jobs. And when they create them and when they run, that's only being done on the hardware for the number of versions that their service level agreement provides. OK, let's check that vSphere web client. And there we go. Now we can see that the restore has gone ahead and finished over here. 
Okay, so in summary, copy data management is a really powerful tool in the fact that it gives your storage administrator the ability to install a very small VMware in-place installation, don't have to install another appliance or anything else, and this is going to manage your life cycle of the snapshots, and it's going to determine of all the different pieces in your environment, who has access to which type of storage and for how many snapshots. And after that policy has reached its limit, the older snapshots will automatically expire off. So you do have lifecycle management built in. Thank you very much.